you've gone. We'll have to have a second look at this hit, but uh, it's been a pretty scary week in terms of hits. I think the, the violence of the blows and the hits in sports, uh, especially sports like hockey and football, is, is due to the improvements in training and performance of the athletes. They're, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. Uh, and so when they hit each other, there's more force with that impact. And, and as a result, concussions are becoming a, a big issue in sports like that. And the officials content to let this one pan itself out. Brady Calla is pummeling him with at least 20 punches. And he's going to get the Gordy Howe hat trick. I don't think there's any doubt about that already with a goal and an assist tonight. What an evening Brady Kell has had. I was first introduced uh, playing hockey when I was, uh, I believe, when I was like four or five years old. I started skating in North Vancouver, where I was born. And, uh, you know, it was just one of those things I think my parents wanted to get me into. Um, to develop some, you know, work ethic and, and basically just create some friends in the community. And um, you're taught at a young age to go out and, and play hard, whether that means violent or, or hitting hard or contact. Over the course of one game or one season where a player's uh, either hitting an opponent or getting hit themselves, uh, you can start to see kind of the cumulative effects of those hits over time. So even if they don't get diagnosed with a concussion, they still may end up with some deficits that are not unlike what you see after an acute concussion. And so that's something that researchers are starting to become more and more interested in, in terms of safety in the sports and being better able to make sure that those athletes aren't being exposed to too much risk. You almost crave that stuff, you know, it was, it's a weird thing. And um, that's the unfortunate thing about the era of hockey I played, you know, it's, that's the way we were programmed at a young age, is to go out and play hard. When a young athlete gets a concussion, uh, there's a growing concern around what the potential long-term consequences of that would be, not only over the course of a few years, but maybe over a lifetime. And certainly players who play uh, up to the professional level or the college level uh, in sports like hockey or football will get hit quite often. And uh, so there's a lot of recent evidence uh, in, in the scientific literature around the development of uh, this syndrome called chronic traumatic encephalopathy or CTE, where uh, retired professional athletes show evidence of pretty significant degeneration in their brain that's associated with a number of behavioral symptoms. Um, and so the, the worry is that if you play contact sports for some period of time, that you're very likely to develop CTE. In junior, I was playing for the Everett Silver Tips. I was a 16-year-old kid, and um, I remember I got into a, a tussle with a 20-year-old guy at the time, and I got a couple in, but I remember that he hit me, and the next thing I remember was waking up in the dressing room. And uh, I think I was kept out of the game, but uh, I was at practice the next day, you know, on the ice and, and back performing, and um, it was a tough thing to experience for sure. Athletes returning to play too soon after a concussion is a, a huge issue. So uh, quite often, because the clinical diagnosis is, is difficult to do, uh, it's, it's sometimes unclear whether the person is completely recovered or not. And if they have any lingering deficits uh, that sometimes aren't you aren't able to pick up in a, in a clinical situation and then they return to uh, their sporting situation where again they're going to be exposed to impacts they have the potential to re-injure themselves and and sometimes with catastrophic consequences if i say i'm hurt then the next guy is going to take my spot you're taught to get back up and play and not think of the pain the concussion research that has been taking place in our lab and other labs around uh, North America and the world has, has informed uh, policies in sports administration bodies and, and some of those policies have been around increased concussion awareness or changing the rules to make the sport safer and, and an issue is how well do those policies get followed and so that's an ongoing challenge in terms of protecting the athletes and doing what's best in terms of the health of those individuals as opposed to the success of the game. And I remember how scared I was of losing my opportunity of playing by going in and telling my trainer, um, by going in and telling my coaches. I felt like I was letting everyone down. And so it was a very hard time for me to, to finally come out and say, I I'm hurt. I don't know if I can put my head through this trauma anymore.
Our research is designed to uh, gain a better understanding of uh, some of the objective things that you can uh, measure after a concussion has happened. So we look at issues like how well a person can balance or how well they can make decisions about um, different visual stimuli that they happen to be looking at. Um, one of the major things that we're uh, trying better to understand is what are the cerebrovascular consequences of a concussion? So how does the blood flow into the brain and how is that affected by a number of different manipulations um, uh, that you can have the person um, undertake and how that affects the blood flow and whether a concussion has some impact on that. Um, another thing that we're doing is uh, looking at blood biomarkers associated with the concussion and doing um, a number of different preparations that allow us to monitor um, constituents of the blood that may be markers for an injury um, uh, having occurred. Another project that we're uh, working on is focused on preventing concussions. So we're working with a, a local company to develop a helmet that may mitigate some of the forces by uh, inserting a helmet liner that is able to uh, respond to the forces as uh, they're imparted onto the helmet and then dissipate those forces so that they are less likely to um, enter into the brain and, and cause uh, the damage of a concussion. And so all of those uh, different projects are things that are um, designed to better understand in an objective way whether a concussion has occurred and then trying to prevent those concussions by uh, coming up with improved um, um, equipment uh, to mitigate against the forces uh, that happen when a head is impacted.